I've been trying out different microphone arrangements just to get the best sound. And one of the best so far has been basically, if that's my head there, put a baseball cap on and the skip that comes out the front, clip a little microphone underneath it onto the side. And that's what I'm using at the moment. But I have to say it does get in your peripheral vision. You're always aware that that little microphone's hang down there. And also, it's quite easy to bump, particularly if you put your hand up to adjust your glasses, you can bump the microphone. So I was thinking, and has anyone done this before? What would happen if you got a baseball cap and you inserted a microphone actually into the skiff and then routed the cable around the side and out the back of the hat? So that would be if it was viewed from the top. The microphone would be down here and the cable would be routed, say, over there with a little tie, uh, and then through the actual rim, and then out the back. And so I decided, well, rather than just mess around, let's actually make one. And here it is. So this is using a standard, I was going to say 10 millimeter in microphone insert, but they're actually something like 9.8 millimeter. And I've not really finished this, this. I'm going to put a drop of resin in that, and then I'm going to paint it black so it completely blends in. And this microphone just sits down, and the, the position I chose here, I've tried it in various positions, mid position's pretty good. It actually sounds better the, the further it moves in. And the cable, I, I've well, for a start, I found the best way to make a hole in this. I initially tried the sort of leather punch type pliers to punch a hole through this fabric, but it's quite tricky because the polycotton fabric is quite strong. And also, I, th I think it's a plastic core to this. Well, it definitely is a plastic core because I found the best way to do this in the end was to melt my way through and I broke one of my own rules. I used my soldering iron to actually melt the hole. And I don't really approve of that because it can damage the tip. If you leave the plastics burning on the tip, it can sort of corrode it. But I, I gave it a good clean afterwards and just tolerated the slight whiff of plastic smoke off the, um, off the barrel. However, what that did, it didn't just melt the hole, it kind of fused all the fibres, because this is a polycotton blend, and it means that the, the cotton aspect of it has been uh, fused together by the plastic component, and also it created a, a sort of cylindrical guide, which is quite good for the microphone. For this uh, little restraint here, I just put a wee bit of wire across. I'm not even sure, sure if you'll see that, because it is very black, but uh, a little bit of wire and two more melted holes. Then once again, just melting hole the tip of the iron, and feeding the cable around the inside of the hem and out the back, and that's it, fundamentally. So, as I say, I'm not sure if MD has ever actually built a microphone into a baseball cap like this before. Any ideas? Has someone done that? But anyway, the next part of this video, I'm going to be showing you how this is wired and how it's made, the actual circuitry for it, it's not that complex, and where I got the components from. But the second part of the video will also be recorded with me wearing this. And I have to say, I think it sounds good. You can, you can give me your thoughts on whether you think it sounds quite good too. But in the meantime, just to give you an idea, I'm going to stand up with this other microphone, uh, just so you can actually hear how the acoustics change in the room, because it, when I'm actually at the bench like this, it does uh, alter the acoustics, you get reflected sound. But um, I'll also demonstrate that with the other uh, cat microphone as well, because I have to say it's really convenient. You just stick this on, plug it in and go. So uh, the next video will be with the audio from this, the next section of the video. So now the audio is coming from the new microphone cap. And when I sourced the components for this, I thought it'd be quite interesting to see if I could just get them from, you know, random dollar store type things. And I got a set up one of this sort of a uh, boom microphone arrangement and it does have a small electric microphone in it, but I wanted one of the larger. I'm not sure how much it affects the sensitivity or the frequency response of these little electric microphones, uh, depending on the sort of diameter. And the, one of the hardest components in the dollar stores to find was the four pin plug. None of the sets of the ear phones has them, you know, none of them seem to have the built-in microphone or the ones that do have the built-in microphone just have that typical arrangement where you've got the two different plugs designed for plugging into the PCs and stuff like that. But uh, I did find the four pin connector, but this one is just, 
Uh, I'm not really sure if I'd really be too confident in this, unless I cut this off and spliced on close. This is interesting. It's a sort of, it's a basically, it's a simple selfie stick, and it's got a little button down here, and it's got this slinky cable is all the way down the inside of this, and then it sort of it folds up the inside. Then there's a sleeve over and just a tiny little circuit board the button. But I thought, you know, let's just for. Uh, just for a change, let's use bought components from an electronic supplier. So my local electronic supplier was Maplin Electronics. And I went into Maplin and I bought the components. I got the plug, I got the cable, and I got the microphone insert. And the plug was... Let's see, the plug came in at uh, £2.19. I thought, yeah, that's all right. It's, you know, fine because it is a fairly specialist component. It's more expensive than the typical... Uh, sort of three pole ones. Uh, the cable was, I thought it was a very good price. It was a uh, one pound a meter, and uh, I've, I've noted the the uh, codes down here. It's Maplin Electronics in the UK, and it's a basically it's a a single core screen cable uh, just for the the microphone. And the final component was the FS forty three omnidirectional mic, and it's a very standard electric microphone capsule. Like like this one in this sort of dollar store set of headphones, but just a bit bigger. And this came in at five pounds, and I thought that seems really expensive for that component. And I, I looked at my other suppliers, exact same spec, exact same microphone, sixty five pence. So uh, that five pounds is quite stiff for that uh, for such a basic standard component. However, here's the arrangement: the Four pin plug has a, a common gr ground or a common microphone and right and left channels, so it can be used for the headphones as well. And there are two wiring standards. Uh, most of the modern ones have this arrangement here. Some of the earlier ones had the ground up here, and this was the microphone they had to sort of make and ground swapped. The odd thing about this is that because the metal barrel, the sort of cable grip in this thing is usually connected to the sort of main body here and therefore the first section here, which is a microphone input, the cable grip is actually connected to the microphone connection, which is a bit odd, but you know, that doesn't seem to cause any problems. The other connections are sort of staggered inside, so the, the first one here is the microphone, then, uh, oh sorry, the, that's the uh, ground. Yeah, that, that'd be, let's just write com then. So this is the microphone, the actual cable grip, the common or ground, and then you've got the right and then the left. So we, don't, we can ignore the left and right ones here, but I found out the hard way, you don't try and cut them off because if you do the whole lot, just when you, next time you plug it into the, uh, your phone, these bits just come out. They actually need to be physically, uh, they're sort of anchored at the top here, so don't cut them off, even though it's very tempting. Also, because the uh, the common, which is effectively the screen of the cable, because when you op open the cable up, you've got the central core, which is insulated, and then you've got this sort of twisted screen round that, which you'll, you'll just pull off to the side, twist together, and that will be effectively your uh, the ground connection. And I, you have to sleeve that inside because it is right next to the microphone and all the other connections, and it is going down to the very bottom contact here. The microphone itself has two pads in the back. The, one of the pads is connected with, by a little track onto the sort of metal surround, and that is the common or ground. Common, ground. And the other one is the, I'll just say mic, it's the microphone output. So that's effectively connecting to the middle core of your cable, and uh, the screen, the sort of outer screen or braid is connecting to the common ground. And that's fundamentally it. There's not an awful lot to it. I chose three metres of the cable just for extra length, and uh, it's, well, judge for yourself. How does it sound? Um, it's about as simple as you could get. Oh, it's worth mentioning. I did notice that uh, different microphones have different sensitivities, and this one says minus 60 dBV. 
uh, as did the one with Rapid Electronics, their standard one, which is a, it seems to be a fairly standard value. But they also have minus 40 dBV, and I think the minus 40 might be less sensitive to uh, the amplitude of sound. That might actually be a situation where smaller microphones like this that are in a mouthpiece directly connected, you know, directly sitting in front of your mouth, may actually have lower sensitivity deliberately, um, or it may be restricted by the size of the diaphragm. But um, the re frequency response was quoted for the Maple one of 50 hertz to 13 kilohertz, and the rapid one was actually 50 hertz to 12 kilohertz. But to be honest, the, all the speech uh, frequencies are well down the sort of well within that range. Um, so um, yeah, it's it's a very simple project, but it, it seems to work very well. And uh, I'll just slip this off and show you, which uh, yeah, you've seen it already. But you know what? I'll, I'll slip it off, and this will probably make noise. I do so and speak directly at it now, because there is the microphone, that's the bit that's actually picking up the noise in the brim of the hat. And the, it's so easy just to put on. All I have to do is just sit it on like this, and that's me ready to record. There's nothing else involved in that. It's, uh, it's worked out very well.